I'm having a bit of a problem with my faceting machine where after a little while of running, the machine will turn off. And what happens is it trips the breaker over here and causes that to trip. This only happens after using the machine for at least half an hour is the test that I did this morning. Uh, it seems to kind of reset over time where I ran the machine, I was polishing for a while yesterday and I was using the machine for a total of about two hours and then it tripped the breaker and then I reset the breaker, turned it back on and it tripped within 30 seconds or so. And now this morning it's taking a lot longer to trip the breaker for the first time but I imagine once it trips, then it'll keep tripping. What I'm gonna do is bring it to my friend's shop and we'll check it out, check out the guts, which I've never looked at before, so I thought it'd be interesting to record that as well. And we'll see if there's something wrong with the machine or you know what the heck the problem is, because this also started happening on, I, I moved it to a different part of the house in the garage actually, which is on a different breaker or a different you know circuit breaker outlet part of the house and it did the same thing yesterday so it's not just because it's on this single outlet so if it's not the house electrical wiring then it's something to do with the machine I imagine I turned up the speed of this just a little bit and it tripped the breaker almost immediately so just to show you what's going on I'll turn it on and I imagine within a short time this will trip or I can increase the speed and probably get it to trip faster there we go. So that click was the breaker tripping in the outlet. And the fuse, which is right here, I checked that, and that is okay. It's a 3-amp fuse and still intact. So that means that if this was pulling more than 3 amps, then it would have blown the fuse before tripping the breaker, I imagine, because the breaker is, or the outlet, should deliver about 15 amps. So something weird is going on somewhere. I don't know where. Comes out of there and goes here. They designed this thing wrong. This wire is the hot wire. Mm -hmm. Yep. This wire is a hot wire. That should have gone through the fuse. The problem with that is this is the ground wire. So the ground is going through the fuse, but yeah. the hot wire isn't? No. <laughs> this wire here is the black wire, which is normally the ground wire. That should be where this is connected as well. This comes out, goes into your control box. These come back. Okay, they go to that switch there, coming back here and coming up to your motor. Well, what I want to try to do first is I'm going to take these two screws off here. Yeah, the way it was working fine, it doesn't cause a problem, which makes sense if it's yeah, but not related to the fuse. See, it's not turning off, so there's something wrong in there somewhere because that, I'll show you, this one's on. Yeah. See? The way this one should be. Do the guts of this one look similar to that one? Do you remember? They look very similar. Most just, of them are the same. Just wired differently for some reason. Now we should have an upper voltage change. That looks like it says 133 volts DC. And it's still registering what? 100? Yeah, 10 volts less. And all the way down. So there's nothing wrong with your motor. That seems pretty good. Huh. Okay, right so now it's... he's asking $200 for those damn motors. And what was happening was the first time it tripped, it took, you know, 10 seconds or so, and then every time after that, it was a shorter and shorter time before it you tripped. might have a bad circuit break. Until too. it, uh... So the lamp goes through that fuse, too. So 
if you get a defect in the lamp or the the bulb, it's not going to short everything out either. Because these here all work off the lamp. It's through that fuse. These don't have fuses, so you're stuck with that. Uh, they have a different kind of internal fuse. But see, you're running. Okay. Huh. I'm going to loosen the fuse. That's working there. It just, okay. Your light's not on the fuse circuit. White wire is your live wire. Your black wire is considered to be the ground. If you had a red wire in there as well as the green one, the green's always the ground. If you had a red wire, then that's the other leg of 220. Because it's the white and red that gives you 220 in the circuit. Now that it's running, could we test the voltage again and see yeah. if it's still pulling that same yeah. 133, 123, whatever it was? Then you got 125 there, 123. That's your max. And then if I turn this down, that should make even less. Okay, yeah, that's so about that's, 60 yeah, volts. That's, that's, that's half speed. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So that's working correctly because it has a load on it before it didn't have a load on it. Yeah. That's why I was checking on that. And then there's these little pots here where you can adjust maximum, minimum speed and torque. So if it's not going fast enough for you, you can adjust that. And you see what this draws now? Rated three quarters of an amp. DC, one amp, AC is your input three quarters of an amp output. With less than an amp for your light and less of an amp here, two to three amp fuse is more than enough. Well, that trip was informative, but didn't quite solve the problem because it's still shorting out at home the next day. And let's see. So what I just did was replaced the breaker, just the outlet itself with a new one. And we're about to turn the power back on and see if that solves the problem. Back from the garage, that should be on. Just maybe not a good sign. What do we got here? Maybe I just need to reset it for the first time. Uh -oh. That's not a good sign. I have a little tester to see what I did wrong here. And we got no power. Interesting. Okay, I rewired it and did the appropriate directional uh, load versus line. Let's see, we've got yellow, which I'm assuming means that I need to reset it to get it started. And these two green, these two lights mean that it is wired correctly. That's good. And then behind me, the light turned on. So now the final test will be to tell, or to turn this on, see if it does the same thing <laughs> immediately. Okay, it wasn't the outlet. That was a waste of time. About 20 minutes after replacing the outlet, I switched this back on as I was trying it out in different places in the house and it's working fine again now. So I really have no idea what's happening. Working here, it's never had a problem in any other outlets except for the one in the garage. And it's intermittent here and we'll see if I can use it for another couple hours before it starts tripping the circuit breaker again. Maybe if that happens, I'll start switching it to other outlets to see if it happens with those two, but it seems like it's only these two outlets. This is a really weird problem because it's inconsistent both with it just being the machine and with it just being the house. Because if it was the machine, then why is it just shorting out those two circuit breakers on the two different outlets. But if it was the house, then why is it just this machine that's shorting out or tripping the breaker? Because I can use, you know, a hairdryer on this outlet and in the garage, I was able to use a shop vac, which pulls a lot more amperage than this fastening machine. It just doesn't make any sense. The common factor is the fastening machine. So it's probably something to do with this. If you have any ideas, you know, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. Uh, but otherwise, you know, maybe like and subscribe the video. <laughs> See if anybody else has any ideas of what to do here.